Dancing is going to talk to us about uh, some uh, containers on Nixos and some Docker uh, Compose goodness. All right. Um, yeah, so this talk is about, uh, about Arion. Um, um, I'm Robert. I'm a co founder of Hercules Labs. Um, we actually did the uh, launch of uh, Hercules CI this week. So, uh, that also means I've been a bit busy. <laughs> um, so, I, I hope this presentation is sort of going to plan. Um, all right, let's get started. Uh, so, Arion. Um, Come on. Probably window focus. All right. Uh, it's a configuration language, so to speak, for Docker Compose. Um, it's based on the NixOS module system. Um, and it's also the tool that you can use to uh, um, actually create the containers and uh, uh, restart them, that kind of thing. Um, it's named after uh, a horse. It's a, a divine horse from Greek mythology. Uh, and, and we chose the name because, well, obviously we have a, a Greek mythology in the name of the company. And um, it's, a, it's a very fast horse. I'll get to that. And it's also a bit of a mix and I can talk, so I thought it was appropriate. Um, so yeah, the, 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 the way this came to be is we were looking for a process uh, manager kind of thing for our local uh, development environments. Um, we've been using uh, SupervisorD uh, for, for Cachex, uh, but it had some problems with uh, properly terminating processes. So we were looking for something else. Um, I've worked with some Tmux automation, but that was a bit too custom, and well, it's, it's not really designed for this purpose. Uh, it looked into systemd, uh, but that doesn't really support uh, like project-based stuff very well. Um, Mixwest containers. Those are obviously very nice, but for project development, if you want to do stuff like live reloading, um, it was a bit, well, not, not flexible enough. You need to bind mount stuff into the container, um, and maybe this has improved, I don't know. At least at the time, um, Nixwest containers weren't a good option for this problem. Um, and so we considered Docker Compose. I guess I don't have to talk that much about Nix on this conf conference uh, in terms of basic explaining. Um, it's really nice to have a programming language for your configuration. Um, and with Nix, we can use the module system, which is really nice. So yeah, um, the way we, we started to, uh, to develop this sort of solution is to just try things out. So this is what I ran, uh, just Docker run. Um, it has uh, the Nix store bind mounted right into the into the container. Uh, so you don't have to rebuild everything or build images. And yeah, you don't really need anything else, basically. Um, or at least as a starting point, you don't need much else in your, in your container. So we just run scratch, but not an option for some reason. So you put a file in there uh, with like root and nobody, and that actually works. Uh, but yeah, so we had to create the, the image, and it was pretty clear that we need something 
like Docker Compose to uh, to actually do this. Um, was already sort of the plan, but yeah. So Docker Compose is uh, uh, a system that lets you define uh, multi-container applications um, and perform operations on them, like uh, building all the containers, uh, building all the images, I should say, um, and starting them, uh, destroying the deployment, all the kind of things you expect from a deployment tool. And a basic configuration file looks like this. Um, it's, it's YAML. It's, people might have opinions about it. Uh, the nice thing is it's a superset of JSON. So we can easily um, write these files from, uh, from Nix. Um, yeah, so what you see here is a, a set of services. It's like a dictionary kind of thing. So this is service name. Um, this basically says, look in the current directory for a Docker, uh, Docker file. And it'll use the service name as the image name. Uh, this will expose uh, port 5000 to the host. And there's an, an extra service uh, for the, for the back end. Uh, so Arion, it really started out as a, just a small bash script that did a thing for us. Um, but with the module system, it's really easy to refactor and um, it was quite fun to make it uh, more of a self-contained thing. So as it grew, we, uh, we open sourced it around December, I guess. Um, yeah, so I think, I think we announced it. And since then, um, it grew from, I think it was 200 lines of bash code. It grew into 317. Not that bad, actually. Bash is a really nice language for this kind of thing. Um, but up to a point, we were thinking of some features that would be hard to implement in, in, in Bash. So we switched to Haskell. Um, that did double the, the lines of code, but we think they're more maintainable lines. So in the end, that should be a good thing. Um, but really, most of the project is, uh, is Nix modules um, and some support code like tests, of course, that uh, also add to the, to the sort of the line count. All right, so demo time, always interesting. Let's see if it works. All right, so um, this is uh, inside the repo checkout. There's an examples directory. You should, uh, should have a look at it. Uh, but I'll also show the, the basics. So these are, uh, well obviously result is, it sh shouldn't be there, but uh, there's Arion packages and Arion compose files. Uh, for the bootstrapping, Arion needs to find uh, some version of Nix packages. Um, often in projects, it's the, it's the case that you have um, a specific version of Nix packages. Uh, I mean, this is before Flakes, right? So, um, yeah, you have some version of Nix packages, probably some overlays that are specific to the project, um, and you want to use those in your in your deployment. So, in this case, it's uh, a very simple invocation of just Nix packages um, with the system set to uh, uh, to Linux. Because that's that's what you're deploying most of the time, and that's really just for for bootstrapping and for providing the the packages argument to the modules. And then we have the compose file. Um, it looks quite a bit like NixOS. Um, the NixOS module system uh, is 
basically independent of NixOS, and you can do uh, a lot of cool stuff with it. Um, it doesn't have to be NixOS itself. So in this case, um, we did have uh, we did like insert the, 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 the packages just like you have on NixOS, uh, but these are uh, Docker Compose services. And so, so one of the nice things is uh, ability to, to share the host store. So you don't have to build images uh, when you're coding. And yeah, I think this should be somewhat self-explanatory. It's, it's a web server. Uh, and now you can start it with the up command. And yeah, so it's, it's actually started. Doesn't produce much output. I've already built the thing, so um, what happened behind the scenes is um, the NixOS, uh, I should say probably the Nix module system, was uh, invoked to uh, evaluate that configuration. Um, it was built with, with Nix build to produce the Docker Compose file, which has all the references to um, stuff like this path here for the Nix documentation. And that just makes it work. If I go to localhost 8000. Browser is a bit shy. I turn it off now. Oh, that should do. There it is. All right. So this this is a fairly uh, well, as it says, it's a, it's the minimal example. This is just using uh, Nix and Docker Compose, uh, but we also put some effort to uh, support Nix OS on this. So I'll stop this deployment. It's actually called a, a project in, uh, in Docker Compose terminology. In Arion, it's a composition. So project is a bit overloaded. Right, so it's still um, services is still an Arian level service, uh, so it corresponds to a Docker Compose service. But we have some some extra fields here, provided by one of the Arian modules, which takes care of the NixOS integration. And so everything below the nixos.configuration is passed into uh, the nixos module system and evaluated there. And this automatically sets the, uh, the, the service uh, command field um, to, the, to the systemd uh, or init invocation uh, for nixos. And it configures the, um, the Docker with the with the right settings. Took a bit of research to get it to work, but there you go. I think name service cache daemon didn't start well. I don't think we need. Uh. <laughs> and it works.
works again. It's it's basically the same thing, but now it's running with much more stuff around it to like clean up slash temp that kind of thing that most containers don't need. But if you need it, it's really nice to have it, I guess. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the the basic thing. Um, yeah, so there, there, there's there's lots of nice things you can do um, for development. For example, uh, we're using bind mounts to do uh, live reloading um, or, or hot hot reloading of our services, which uh, makes for a nice development experience um, for for a quick iteration loop. Um, let's see, let me get to the slides. Right. So I thought it would be, would be nice to talk about the module system because it's, uh, I think it's really cool. Um, it's a really nice way to um, work with a certain type of com complexity, so to speak. Um, it's it's the kind of thing you see in, in NixOS, um, but it also really applies nicely to um, well to to Arion of course, and I think there's lots uh, lots of applications that benefit from uh, from the module system. Um, for example, I think there's a talk from IOHK about uh, the Haskell.nix uh, alternative Haskell infrastructure. I think that's using the module system. And I really like it. <laughs> okay, so so one of the uh, basic things you need to know about the module system is that there's basically no difference between um, your configuration and other modules that are usually provided by, say, NixOS or Arion in this case. Um, so th this I think this is really uh, an important feature because it lets you uh, factor things out into separate modules and um, actually take advantage of having a, uh, a programming language as your configuration language. Um, yeah, so, so this is what a basic invocation of the module system looks like. It's a bit of a contrived example, but uh, I'll, I'll walk th you through it. Uh, suppose you have uh, a call of next packages. Um, all you need to do is call lib dot eval modules. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have uh, Nix packages itself, you can directly import the lib directory. So you don't have to choose uh, even a, a, a system architecture in, in advance. Um, but if you do have Nix packages, you can uh, take it from here. And you just invoke it. You tell it where the modules are. You get back uh, an attribute set with uh, config in it. It's the same config that you get passed into the uh, into the modules. So this lets you use um, the config in whatever context you have. Uh, yeah, you you also uh, you always have the uh, lib argument passed to it. That's built into the module system. Uh, also options uh, that lets you do introspection into which options are available. Um, packages, it's actually a bit of a lie. Um, that one is not built into the module system itself. Um, so if, if you want to have it, you actually need to uh, declare it as, a, as an option. I should probably have put that on the slide. Uh, ask me after the talk. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so so this should be, I guess, more familiar. Um, the the config prefix here is optional, so if you're if you're not declaring um, options, config, or imports, but just foo is whatever, um, that actually means config or foo. And these are. Uh, so the, these values are then combined with uh, other modules in in the configuration, 
And uh, so, in the, for example, here bar should probably define config.bar to some value, and it's made available here. Um, but this module is also free to declare its own config.bar, and if there's two definitions, uh, in the module system you can have a, a merge function that combines the two values. Um, so this config will always have the combined values from all the modules together. Um, there's some sort of fancy things you can do. Um, Arion relies on submodules. Uh, basically, whenever you see uh, angle brackets name in the in the Nixos documentation, that means that's a, a submodule. In Nixos, usually they're just just data, so to speak. But that's not necessary. You can actually do anything you like in these modules. They're, they're proper modules. So in in Arion, I didn't really expect this. Um, because I was more familiar with the way it was used in NixOS, but not, I didn't really look into it that much yet. Um, so it was only recently that I refactored it into proper submodules, so you don't have to um, manually call the, uh, the module system for, for each of the services. It's just uh, a type that says uh, uh, services are submodules modules. Uh, so that's really nice and you can actually do stuff like imports in this sort of subtree of the of the composition. Uh, and, and that means that uh, this file will be evaluated um, and it can only set things for services.web itself. It's in its own namespace. Um, this is something we figured out. Um, the module system relies heavily on lazy evaluation to make things work, uh, because obviously when you're declaring the config, but you're also getting it back as an argument merged with other things, that's uh, recursion going on there. And because of laziness, it can actually work. But I used to be quite wary of it. Um, I've run into situations where there was an infinite loop uh, due to the way things are structured in the, in the module system. Um, so it's, it's nice to discover that some things, some of the more fancy things actually do work. Because uh, normally when you, um, so when, when you declare the configuration, the structure of that attribute set should not depend on the configuration directly. Um, it's kind of mind bending, but that's what it is. So turns out you don't actually need to do that all the time. Uh, in some cases, uh, you can, for example, look at options instead, which is um, available sort of earlier in the recursion. And you can use it to, to check whether um, some options are available. Uh, we've used it, for example, to provide uh, a better Nix ops integration in the Hercules CI agent. Um, so if, if you just declare Nix ops specific stuff in, in Nix OS, you'll, you'll, build, you'll be uh, declaring values that are, that are undefined. Um, there's no deployment uh, namespace in, in OS, so that's an error. So with this sort of pattern, you can you can make this optional, <coughs> and I think uh, this will be very useful uh, if we uh, sort of decentralize uh, NixOS, which I think is a really good idea. And with Flix, uh, it actually becomes feasible to do to do so. Um, you can use this to detect whether something. Uh, is available or not, and provide a better experience when people have some combinations of modules in their in their uh, configuration. Um, yeah, 
yeah, so like I mentioned, the submodules are uh, proper modules, so you can actually use them to do uh, computations on your configuration. So for example, in Arion, we have the service.environment variable, which has all the environment variables for the, for the service. <coughs> and uh, it needs a tiny bit of processing, well, almost no processing at all, actually. But um, this is actually declared in the uh, service level modules. So usually in Nix packages, you see that there's some computation uh, that maps over all the modules. Um, but you can actually move some of this computation into the module itself. And that cleans up the, the code nicely. Um, so, so in Arion, uh, each service is responsible for its own um, piece of the of the YAML file. Um, one thing I noticed is uh, lists can be annoying to work with. Um, in particular, we've had. Uh, uh, We've worked with the capabilities in Docker Compose. So um, with Docker, you can use Linux capabilities. They're basically uh, ways to uh, restrict the security uh, context of a container. Uh, so you can disallow stuff or allow stuff. And there's a d default set of capabilities that a container has. And Docker Compose lets you modify that set so you can uh, remove things from it, you can uh, add things to it. And so the, the obvious thing to do is model these fields as uh, lists of strings. But that's a bit uh, annoying if you have uh, a, a service that splits into modules. Uh, because combining those lists is not very obvious. So what do you do if um, one of the modules says uh, this capability sh should be removed and the other module says it should be added. Um, so changing that to an attribute set uh, makes it much easier because then the module system takes care of this. Uh, the module system lets you use priorities uh, to override um, lower priority definitions. So th this makes for a, for a nicer uh, interface. Um, yeah, and, and while developing the system, um, yeah, I, I noticed that it's uh, when you when you're constructing a, a, a new system, um, it's best to start with the low level stuff. And then whenever you need something on top of that, uh, you can do it in a separate module. So I really recommend to do so. Um, it's easy to add things to a new module, but that can turn into a mess. Um, yeah, so in, in the future, we'll be um, looking at integrating better with Flakes um, as they evolve. Um, we're going to improve the the image support, and we're looking into caching the evaluation to improve performance for commands that don't need to uh, rebuild. Um, and we're thinking about um, how to deal with uh, more distributed applications of the module system. Um, and one example of a sort of an experiment we're doing is project.nix. Um, it's really not ready for prime time, but basically the goal is to uh, standardize the, the, the glue code um, that you find in, in many projects. Um, like how do you override the Haskell packages or all those kind of things. It, it's nice to have um, options that have a, a, a nice definition and can be reused in uh, language integrations. Right, thank you.
questions? Uh, so I'm not sure if you touched that in the introduction because I wasn't here, uh, but how would you put that into production? Like, of course you have a Docker Compose setup, but is this Docker Compose YAML like distributable so you can use stuff like Docker Stack to put that into production? Uh, right, so um, we don't have a complete deployment story yet because we're not using this for our production services. Um, so that's kind of a question we also have. Uh, Docker Compose is a front end to both uh, Docker itself and Docker Swarm. So um, at least in theory, it should be easy to actually do a Swarm deployment um, using this. Um, so that's a way to go, I guess. Um, and the, the way you wire it up into your uh, deployments uh, th I think that really depends on the technolo technology that you're using. Um, so, yeah, I can't say much about the specifics of that. But it, it's, it's definitely feasible. Um, I think it's not a good idea to use the host store on a production uh, deployment. It's better to use the, um, the image support that's built into this. Uh, we, don't, uh, we haven't used it with the registry yet. We've only uh, used Docker load. Um, so I don't expect, expect any problems with uh, pushing to a registry, uh, but we, we just haven't done it yet. So my understanding is that we need some kind of front end in Nix expressions to describe how we create a cluster of containers with services or systems with services, and then some back end to generate the YAML file. Um, I haven't used it too much, but my understanding is that Nix Ops has some representation for describing such a cluster and then various backends. Did you consider adding a backend to Nix Ops to generate Docker Compose YAML files? Um, not really, to be honest. Um, and I think it's been worthwhile to take another approach. Um, there's, there's some overlap between features that are provided by NixOps and um, Docker Compose. Um, so Docker Compose basically has all the state in, in Docker, uh, whereas NixOps needs uh, an extra state database. Um, so it's actually nice to avoid that complexity. Um, yeah, I think something similar can be done for NixOps, but it's probably best to, uh, uh, to take a different approach there uh, because uh, it's, it's just structured a bit differently. Hey, uh, what is the story about garbage collection routes and uh, how much space uh, will it occupy and how to clean up? Great question. Um, currently, it's using a temporary uh, garbage collection route for the duration of the command. So um, when you run Docker up without any other arguments, that's, that's sufficient because um, it's only running as long as the Docker up command is running. But when you're using detach, um, the command will, will terminate while the deployment is still up. So in that case, you technically uh, have a risk of um, garbage collecting a, a live deployment. Uh, that's not great. Uh, for our purposes, this has not been a problem. Um, but if you deploy, I think that yeah, that's that's one of the main reasons to go with images rather than using a host store. Um, the images will not be garbage collected. Um, yeah, that said, I think. Um, I mentioned evaluation cache. I think it's a good idea to um, change Arion a bit to uh, be more aware of where things are deployed so we can uh, both create a garbage route for that deployment on the user system and uh, reuse the, the YAML file to speed up commands like um, Arion logs, for example, so that it doesn't have to re-evaluate the entire deployment either. So 
Um, that will also improve the, uh, the garbage collection situation. Okay, so if that's all the questions, uh, okay, one, one more from Domen before lunch. Yeah, so I just wanted to, um, well, it's not a question, it's an answer for France. So um, the reason that we are deploying to, to Amazon and what Arian gives us is that we can share the module system between what Amazon runs and what runs in the Docker. Um, and, and that's the biggest uh, addition here because um, the Docker is just a uh, uh, well, runtime uh, protection system in, in that case and it takes care of, of port sharing and all of that. But uh, we are essentially running the same kind of process and the same kind of configuration as on the machine stand. Um, and th that's a nice thing f uh, of reusing the module system, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Robert. And Thank you.